Hey everyone, welcome back to another video tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up a varnish caching service on a Bitnami based WordPress website on the LightCell platform. Varnish is an HTTP accelerator or a caching service that also acts like a reverse proxy. So it sits in front of your Apache PHP web application service and its primary role is to uh, cache static files. These are files like uh, JavaScript files, CSS files, images, um, or and even font files or PDF files. And it takes those files when the requests come in for them, caches them in memory, and then any subsequent requests for those similar files are served from memory instead of passing that to Apache, PHP, or your WordPress service uh, to serve. Um, as a result, you should see a boost in performance in, uh, of the server as well as your website. Uh, it will also allow your server to take on more requests um, and more visitors. However, I, I should say that it is relative, so not you know the amount of performance that any website will see is always going to be different because it will depend on many factors, including the type of website, the amount of plugins, the type of plugins, uh, the type of content uh, and static files that you have, and maybe some other things as far as your hosting stack is concerned as well. But caching the static files is an important part of optimizing your website. I've done video tutorials on setting up caching plugins with Redis, um, memcached and also some other caching services like our CloudFront CDN service that LightCell platform has, um, as well as Cloudflare. So there are several videos and, and very there are a lot of options on setting up caching. Varnish is just another one of them that I wanted to show you how to set up as part of our web hosting for beginners uh, topic. So let's see what improvements we get. I will do a load test on the sample website uh, before we install Varnish and after we install Varnish and we'll see what the improvement is for this website. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here I am logged into my LightCell dashboard and I have a few WordPress uh, instances. The one that we will use for this tutorial is Varnish Setup for WordPress, this one right here. I have it configured with a sample um, a sample website, a static IP, and uh, a sample domain as well, a test domain. Uh, so if you, if I go to uh, www.webhostingforbeginners.site, which is a just a test domain for me, You'll see that I've loaded up a sample theme with some dummy content for the purposes of this video. Uh, so the first thing that uh, I would like to mention is if you are enabling Varnish or running through this tutorial for an existing website, then uh, I would suggest, I highly suggest that you do not do this on your production instance. Instead, you will want to do this in a non-production instance and then just migrate the domain over. So I, I guess I would suggest do this, you could do this in a couple of ways. Uh, first, you could just take a light cell snapshot um, of your real instance and then create a brand new instance from the light cell snapshot. Then enable or perform all the seri uh, steps of this tutorial on that new instance and then just point the domain over or static IP. Uh, detach it from the old instance and attach it to the new instance. Uh, the other route you could do if you're not using LightCell or if you're not using Bitnami or, or anything like that, you could do is back up your WordPress website using uh, a backup plugin in WordPress and then create a brand new instance and uh, restore uh, the backup into that new instance. So maybe a couple of ways to do this, but uh, either way, I would suggest either, you know, not doing this on production. If you are going to do this on production, then uh, on your live site, then uh, be sure to take your backups before you run through enabling varnish and, and all of these steps. Let's get started. The first step that I would do is uh, let's take a load test before we apply any sort of varnish um, installation or configuration. 
so what I will use is a tool called loader.io. I've set this up and, and created a free account. Um, and you can also use this. Basically, it's a performance uh, load tool for uh, websites. Um, what I'll do here is create a new test. And we can say the test name is before varnish. And then we'll just leave this as clients per test. We'll hit 250 clients for a duration of, I don't think we need to do it for 30, uh, one minute. We'll just do it for 30 seconds. And all of this information we can leave the same. Uh, let's see what's under advanced settings. Uh, nothing here. Okay, so what we'll do is run this test before I apply varnish on the server. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, look like the test finished, uh, ran for 30 seconds. Um, it sent about 250 users to the website within 30 seconds and the average response time or load time was 226 milliseconds, which is not bad actually. Um, uh, but the website is really is just a sample with no content, uh, no plugins. Um, so, you know, it's, it's should be typical to get this, some, something like this without doing any optimizations. Um, so 226 before varnish, that's what we, we have. Um, so let's get started on setting up varnish. Uh, the first thing we'll do is SSH into uh, the server. So I have done that right here and I'm using a local uh, installed SSH client, Bitvise. Um, you could either use a locally installed tool like Bitvise or uh, Putty, uh, or you could use the web SSH um, which is by clicking on this button here. Uh, the first thing we will want to do is disable page speed. This is something that Bitnami recommends, so let's go ahead and do that. We will um, open up the configuration file to disable it. So this is our Apache configuration file. Search for page speed. Um, and we'll just disable these two lines right here. We will save the file and restart Apache. Now I'm just copying um, commands that I've already ran through. You can do the same. Um, I'll put all the commands and steps on my website, webhostingforbeginners.net, uh, for the post uh, for this video. Apache is being restarted. Okay, we have page speed disabled. The next thing we'll do is enable varnish. On the Bitnami-based uh, WordPress instances in Lightcell or, or even on AWS, uh, they have Varnish already installed. They just do not activate it or they have it disabled by default, so we will have to enable it. If you're running through this tutorial on a non-Bitnami-based uh, setup, then you will need to install Varnish. And I, I'll try to link to some posts or articles that um, show how to install Varnish if you don't have Varnish already there. But our instance already has Varnish. We just need to enable it. So we will type this command, and then we will start Varnish up. Okay, and here we go. Varnish has started, and by default, it runs on port uh, 81. So the next step is to create a configuration file for Varnish or, or how Varnish will treat and uh, work on your static files or, or what rules that it will apply when caching your files or not caching your files. So default, it comes with a, uh, a just a standard configuration. But what we want to do is um, get a WordPress and friendly configuration for uh, Varnish and Bitnami actually has provided us with a sample. And so we're going to set that up right now. Um, so what we will first do is make a backup of that standard file just in case we want to revert back. So we will run through this command. So basically this was uh, going into Varnish's directory and um, taking that default.vcl varnish configuration, uh, I'm not sure what VCL stands for, but this is a configuration file, 
and we did a backup of it. Uh, second thing we'll do is go and fetch the, um, the sample file that Bitnami provides for WordPress, which is optimized for WordPress. So uh, we'll do a wget, and then this is the path to the URL. Um, to that uh, WordPress uh, um, enabled varnish configuration file. So we'll pull that down and uh, then we will run through uh, and copy that file and we'll rename it as default.vcl in the varnish directory. Uh, the next thing we'll need to do is the, the file that we copied um, it, uh, it assumes the port for Apache is 8080 or something di different. But in our, in our case here on LightCell, the Apache port is 80. So we'll need to run this command to modify the file. Uh, and we're using a, uh, the sed or sed command in Linux to search for port 80 and replace it, or search for port 8080 and replace it with 80. So we'll run that. Uh, you could always just vi into the file and make make the same modifications as well. Now that we have our WordPress uh, uh, Varnish configuration file, we will restart Varnish again. And uh, while it's doing that, or let's just wait to make sure it came back up in case we had any errors in our Varnish configuration file, it will not start. But here it looks like it did start. Yeah, so it started on port 81. So. What we will do now is open up port 81 on our uh, firewall. So click on networking and then open port 81 here. Okay. So what we should be able to do is take this IP address, open a new browser tab, and then on port 81, we should see the website and if we inspect using the chrome tool and go to network let's refresh again and if we inspect the files that are being um, rendered if we look at css files we will see that the x cache parameter right here shows hit which means that this now file was being delivered by Varnish instead of Apache PHP. If you look at another file, you'll, show, you'll see that it's a hit. So we know that Varnish is working. Um, another way to check Varnish real quick I could show you is, um, see, you could do the Varnish log command in SSH, hit the website again, of port 81. There we go. And you'll see that the log is now um, showing what Varnish is doing on each of the requests um, and whether it's a miss or a hit. Uh, Xcache miss means that Varnish does not have it in its cache and it has to go to um, uh, Apache uh, to serve the file. Uh, but an Xcache uh, hit at, uh, uh, header attribute will mean that Varnish found it and uh, it served it for um, for the user. The other thing I think you could do, um, I think I have that command here, um, is uh, look at varnish stat, uh, which is another uh, command or uh, utility installed when we install when varnish is installed. So it's sudo varnish stat, and then we provide the directory where varnish is installed. So here, a uh, couple of uh, parameters to um, uh, to be aware of. Uh, the first one would be the backend reuse. And the backend reuse basically means how often Varnish uh, can find contents in its repository cache. And then uh, the other one would be to look at is um, uh, cache miss, main.cache underscore miss. And that means how many times Varnish had to go back to Apache to fetch the file. Um, so these numbers should start, uh, you know, uh, changing, climbing, reducing based on uh, the activity that's happening. So you can always look at this uh, as well. All right, so we'll go on to the next step. We need to configure Varnish to um, turn
terminate the SSL because we have SSL installed on our um, website. I had a, I had the Let's Encrypt uh, SSL installed for this already. So uh, to do that, we will modify the Vietnami configuration file. So let's go back to SSH and so come down here and we will just paste this right up here. Um, again, these commands and steps uh, will be on webhostingforbeginners.net uh, on the post for this video tutorial. So check that out if and you can copy and paste along as you are running through this tutorial. So we will paste this. And nothing major to explain here, just to show that this is the reverse proxy kind of setup that Varnish uh, would need to be configured with. And it basically means that any requests that are coming in um, go to port 81 and then let uh, Varnish handle either serving the file from cache or retrieving the file from Apache. So that's what we are enabling here. And we can save that. Uh, the next thing we'll need to do is modify the WP config file. So we will, and here we will insert, there is, yep. Yeah. And here we'll insert this line of code, which helps uh, WordPress serve the file correctly or um, for HTTPS um, SSL termination. So again, we'll hit insert and paste it. All right, save the file. Um, okay, and uh, the last step is to restart Apache. Go ahead and do that before we can start doing tests. Okay. So now I will open up a new browser and go to the uh, Chrome DevTools or open up the network or the inspect tool and open up the network tab. And then let's load up our website. Um, this is a different browser I'm using just to really uh, um, prevent any browser caching to come in the way for our test. So web hosting for beginners.site. So if I go here, we load and we can see our network activity. We take uh, this uh, uh, style.min.css file, click on that. And we will see that the cache hit. That means this uh, that CSS file was already in Varnish cache from maybe our previous test or the other steps that I was doing earlier. Uh, but so when a, another request came from a different browser, the cache is being hit. So that is working. If we click on projects, uh, we'll see this image. We'll see that the cache is missed. Now, the reason it's missed is because the first visit, it will always have to go to Apache to uh, get the file. But if we refresh the same page now, that same image should say hit. Is it the same one? Uh, it still says miss. Uh, let's see, let's click on it again. Go ahead and make sure that that it was working. Here we go, we have a cache hit, uh, but for the photos, oh, we have a cache hit now too. So there we go. Now uh, Varnish is fetching and serving these files. So this is one way to test, but our real test we were going to do is with our load testing tool. So before Varnish uh, was installed, uh, we were getting uh, response times of 226, dot, um, uh, 226 milliseconds. So let's do another test. We'll have the same parameters. So test name is after varnish. Same thing, uh, 250 clients. We will do it for 30 seconds. I think I did HTTP last time. Um, let's do HTTPS. Maybe I did HTTP last time. Well, let's run the test and see what we get. Okay, our tests are complete and you'll see here now we are at 40 milliseconds. From uh, before it was uh, 
two, I think it was 228 or two something. Here we go, before varnish, it was 226 milliseconds. And one of the things that you'll notice here is this graph. Green bar indicates the number of clients that this tool is sending to our website. So what you could see here, whenever the increase in clients, so that, that graph goes up, the, the um, average time also is going up with it. On the after varnish test, even if it's throwing uh, a lot of requests are coming to the server, the average response time hasn't changed. So that just means that the load is really consistent and it can handle, uh, it's able to handle the peak traffic that is being uh, sent to the server. So this is a test um, uh, that we would hope it did this because we installed an opt a caching service and optimization tool. So we went from 226 milliseconds to after varnish to 40 milliseconds. Now, one of the last steps that we need to do is install a plugin that helps um, delete the cache. So what you could come, what you would wanna do is go back into our WordPress uh, WP admin. Now in my test, this plugin was not as fast as I would hope, flushing the cache. Um, it took about 30 seconds to up to a minute before the changes were reflected on the site, uh, or, um, on the uh, end user site. So we will go to plugins, hit add new, and um, search for varnish. And you'll have several plugins. You could use the W3 Total Cache plugin, um, or any uh, there, there are many plugins that help with varnish caching. The one that I will install is Proxy Cache Purge. That's the one that I've read uh, that uh, seems to be compatible or works in my scenario for our, for our instance. So once you activate it, you'll see a Proxy Cache menu item. And then here, all we have to do is set up a local host, save the IP or hit save. We can um, check the caching. So check against the URL and it should come back with something like this. Um, it does say that the varnish caching service is running but is unable to cache your site. Not really sure why that it's saying that. We've actually uh, tested and, and proven that varnish is working. And then it also says that the proxy IP address is set to local host, but a proxy has not been detected. So again, I'm not sure why that it's saying that. If uh, any of you have, uh, have done this before and know why it's showing up as a warning, please let me know. But as far as I know, or the test that I've done, it seemed like everything is working. Um, so, but enable that plugin. The reason we want to do that is if you start making changes to content, then you would want those to be served by Apache, um, at least on the first time, and not go not being served by Varnish. If you see that this plugin doesn't work or is too slow for your needs, what you could always do is come back onto SSH and uh, basically just restart Varnish um, using the command uh, the Bitnami script uh, command. And then instead of start varnish, you would just say restart varnish. And when you do this, it actually will clear out the cache. So you can do it this way, or you can try one of these plugins to flush the cache every time you make changes to your website. And there we go. And the site's running. All right, so I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel if you are interested in these type of topics. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please put them down below. Um, if you have run through this tutorial and it helped you, or if it uh, did not help you, uh, then put those down in the comments below as well. If you have other optimization tips or if I did any of these steps incorrectly and you know how to do them uh, differently or improvement on them, please put them down in the comments below so others can benefit from it and even I can learn from it. Be sure to visit the website webhostingforbeginners.net where I will have all the commands and steps for this tutorial posted there. Um, check out the channel. I have over 60 videos on the topic of simplified web hosting on platforms like LightCell and AWS. 
I also have WordPress tips and tricks, and I also have some tutorials on how to enable services like email hosting or um, uh, even caching, uh, setting up CloudFront, setting up database, set it, setting up a high availability WordPress environment, if that's something that you need. So check out all those videos on the channel, like them, subscribe again to the channel if you haven't, and until the next video, take care.